So today we are doing a little bit of uh, what I'd consider new age bluegill fishing if you want to call it that. We're going to be using everything from side imaging, even down to sonar, all the way up to new Mega Live and 360, all of it combined to target bluegills. As you can see right now, I'm just kind of graphing around. We have one of the main lake points that's out here, sets up really well for this type of stuff. And as you can see here shortly, right there is what we're looking for. Bluegill beds, those sweet honeycombs. Whether you're a bluegill guy, a bass guy, you know those honeycombs. When you see that, that means fish, especially when the bluegill start doing this deep spawning stuff. And that right there is beautiful. That is exactly what we're looking for. And you can even see that they are in the beds right now with the side imaging. Super cool stuff. You can zoom in right there and you can take a look at that. And you can see the little dots of the bluegills in them. So we're just gonna spin around here quick. I'm gonna drop a waypoint on that, both those colonies there. And then we're gonna just gonna hop up on the deck. We'll use our 360 and our Mega Live both together to target these fish and it's going to be a fun little deal. The bluegills are always, that's always a fun deal to get on no matter how old you are, what you like to fish for, catching bluegills, especially these deep bluegills like this. It's just something different, especially this time of year where some things can get kind of slow. This is just something different. It allows you to mess with your technology and uh, get the most out of it. So uh, yeah, let's drop another waypoint on these ones and then hop up on the deck and see what we can catch. So we spun around and pulled up to this point where these bluegill colonies are. And as you can see, I kind of pulled up to where I want the boat to be. I can see the colony good on 360. And now what I'm gonna do is utilize this target lock. I'm gonna come down to my 360 here and you can see those little honeycombs. I can see the fish. So I'm gonna press and hold right where I want to, turn target lock on. And now what that's gonna do is allow me to be spot locked. As you can see, the wind is kind of coming in on us here, but these fish are off to the side. And with this target lock, it's an independent mounting system for your Mega Live, which can move independently from the trolling motor, as you can see. It's a totally different mounting system, which is super cool for situations just like this. So with the target lock, this allows me to be able to be spot locked into the wind. I can have my boat in the perfect position that I want it to. I'm set up just right to where I can make these good casts, but then I can also still utilize Mega Live with this target lock. It allows me to be able to pinpoint an exact spot and I can keep Mega Live there and you can see it's turning up shallow there and I can even see them on Mega Live right now. Getting there. Pretty bull bluegill, look at that big dot. They look so pretty when they get like that. He's got that leech down the gullet. Come on. That little drop shot out the man, and they get a hold of that thing. They ain't going nowhere, it just pins them. And that right there is the setup. Drop shot and bluegills. Super fun, cool way to catch them. It's kind of a thing around the office that a lot of us have been kind of experimenting with and kind of falling in love with is trying to find different ways to fish a drop shot. Uh, it's super unique because you can mess with it so much. You can mess with your leader size. Uh, you can throw tons of different baits on them, live bait, plastics. Obviously the drop shot is, you know, it's a proven bass catching machine. It's been around forever. Everyone uses it and everyone loves it for a good reason. It catches fish. And that kind of goes across the board of all species, as you can see here. Especially for a bass guy like myself, it kind of feels like I'm right at home catching these bluegills. And it's fun, especially when you start to get around these bigger bluegills and they're all grouped up like this. It's, it's a fun deal. Here's another one. Ooh, this guy's fighting. Not a giant one, but another solid bluegill on the old drop shot. There's another sweet little bluegill there. Not a bad one. They're all decent ones. It's, it's a good time catching them on this drop shot, especially when you get those ones that are that size. They all, even little bluegills, sometimes you think you have a bath on them. <laughs> they fight so darn hard, but it's super fun doing this drop shot system. So another reason why I'm going with this drop shot and leech approach today is, I mean, obviously it's super fun to catch them doing this, but one thing that's really nice is how I can kind of just keep that bait in there a lot longer than most baits. Um, for example, if I was throwing a cork with this wind that you can see behind me here, 
a lot of times that bait can tend to just float through really fast. Even if you have a heavier cork, it can just kind of float through. And don't get me wrong, the cork is an awesome, awesome bait to have on on the deck when doing this bluegill stuff. But it's just really nice to be able to hold that bait in one spot, especially with these deeper bluegill colonies that I can't see with my eyes. And I really have to utilize the technology to know where I'm at. And I can get these pinpoint spots where I can really just let my bait you know, get to that exact spot. Since it's got a little bit of weight to it, I'm able to just do, you know, a pitch. I can look down at my electronics, pitch over to them. I know that that's the area that they're in. And as you can see, I'll just kind of sit there and just slowly pull that bait through and just kind of let the leech do its own thing. I'm not really shaking my rod or anything. That leech, when you nose hook it or kind of thread it on, that light hook, that leech will just kind of sit there and flutter. And it's super pretty looking, and that's all you need for these bluegills. That's just a killer to them. Anytime that they see a leech floating, they're gonna grab that thing. Just looks so good. One thing that's just super handy about this target lock is how I'm able to just not even worry about the boat. When I can just set my spot lock, set my target lock, and then I'm just fished just like that. Where you saw me where I'm just putting on my leech, I'm dealing with the fish, I don't even have to think about the boat. And all I have to do is just keep fishing, keep catching. That's all I got to worry about. As you can see, the target lock is on. It's pointed right up at that colony. I'm just making these short flips to it, just 30, 40 foot flips. I just know that they're on this steep break and I can just see them right there set up perfect. I can see exactly where I need to cast, whether I'm looking at my 360 or my target lock, I can see that arrow, see exactly where I need to make that pitch. And there we go, just like that. One after another, all I gotta do is just, just catch them. It's a pretty sweet system. And for the setup, all it is is just a simple panfish rig. Um, just a light action rod. I like a little bit of length to it. Just when you're doing these pitches, you can get some real accuracy and kind of get it out of ways when you're trying to stay off the fish like this. Uh, just a simple, uh, smaller reel. I have braid on this. I like braid when doing this just because it's really sensitive. Um, braid doesn't tend to coil like straight mono and fluorocarbon tend to do. And then for a leader, all I'm doing is just a real light fluorocarbon leader, just a six pound leader with that six pound main line. And that's all you need. It's a really simple setup. Obviously the drop shot too is a simple setup. All I'm doing here is about eight inches for my leader and you can go anywhere from you know, down to three inches if you want it tight to bottom, if those bluegills are hanging real low. Typically want to stay anywhere between six inches to 18 inches on your leader, just because those bluegills are typically going to be hanging around their beds tight. So you don't need that super tall leader. All right, so we just moved up the lake a little bit. And I just kind of want to show you guys um, the key things that I look for when looking for these big bluegill colonies out deep. One of the things that they really love to set up on is anything that's just different down the bank. It could be a good grass point, a good actual point, like an actual physical land point, or something that you have like here, what we start to see how this hard bottom point starts to come out. You see grass up on top and you can tell it's really hard bottom by looking at my return here on side imaging. You can see that really hard bottom edge and right there, perfect on the edge, right where they should be is a big colony of them. You can see there's that really hard yellow return on my side imaging pause that image and you can see there's that perfect point that steps out there. Dips into that deeper water you can see where it gets into this softer bottom you get that darker kind of brown softer bottom but that hard return is that good sand edge which is really what they like and what they need to spawn. Um, they need that hard bottom to make those perfect bowls that they need to spawn in. So hard bottom is definitely a key when looking for these bluegill colonies. Again you can use side imaging when looking for that or you can use even your sonar. You can even see when you get that tight return on bottom, that means that you have some sort of hard either sand, some sort of hard bottom. And um, that mixed with, like I was saying, those transition lines where you get either those good weed edges or you get a nice point that comes out, just something different. Or even sometimes if you get a flat, even if a lake really has no contour to it, and you just get a little patch where you get really nice sand, a really nice hard bottom, that too can even hold these bluegill beds. So just some, some key areas to really look for, those key concentration areas that really hold those big colonies where they like to bed up at. And that right there is a perfect example. So we're gonna drop a pin on that one, see if we can catch a few more. So I got the boat going in a nice straight line here. That's one thing that's really important with side imaging. To keep the boat in as straight a line as possible, just that way you don't get a blurred image. You can kind of see where I was turning right there. And you want to avoid that 
just that way you can get that crisp clean image just like that you can see those beds are set up just perfect like I was talking about that nice transition line where it goes into a little bit softer bottom that's super hard bottom there this is still a good firm bottom as you can tell from that good solid reed I'm gonna put a pin on that while I got the chance right there quick wave point and yeah just look at those bluegill beds I mean you can even see them they're in the beds you can count the dots one by one there and that is textbook deep bluegill bed stuff right there. So we're gonna spin around on those, catch a couple of them. What do we got here? That is a really nice bluegill. Ooh, there we go. I might have found a colony of some bigger ones there. Right, that's my first one out of this colony. And that is what we're looking for. Look at that big old black dot on them. That's awesome, big old humpback. Those are the bluegills we're after there. Super cool, that colony is probably one of the biggest ones we've seen yet here today. Looking at 360 there, there's, I don't even know, probably 50, 60 beds in that colony. And they usually group up by size. So we're gonna get this one back and get back in there and get a big one. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> Golly, that is a tank. Gosh. Those are the big ones that we're after, those deep bluegill colonies. This is probably the deepest colony we've found so far, and that's typically what you'll see with these colonies. The deeper they are, typically you're going to get those better fish. They like to go out deep where they can just be left alone, do their thing, get in these big colonies like you see down here, and uh, yeah, that is a prime example right there. That is a tank. We can get that one back. Could be a better one. It's got some shoulders. Oh yeah, getting there. Definitely a lot better ones in this colony. You see the average sizes went way up. Getting a lot better build to them. These are real tall ones. Real mature ones. And one thing that's important when catching these bigger bluegills like this is get them back and also to let those big ones go. I know that that's one thing that kind of gets preached a lot and um, I'm, I'm definitely not against keeping some fish. I don't want to say that at all, that it's a bad thing to keep fish, but those bigger year class bluegills especially, pan fish and bluegills, it's important to let those big ones go. Those big ones are hard to come by and those genetics are hard to keep in a lake, especially when you're catching fish like this, when you're utilizing this technology that really helps you get on them. It's important to just let those big ones go, keep those genetics going, so that way you can keep coming back and keep catching big bluegills like this. Another one. They are down there, thick as thieves, and man, just a bunch of solid ones. That's another pretty good one there. Take that. Big bull bluegill on the old drop shot. Just giving a little bit of a different style. Obviously this is something a little bit new that, like I've been saying, we've been messing with and really enjoying. It's a super cool new way to catch bluegills, something a little bit different, and it, it works really, really well when doing this deep bluegill stuff. So something to give it a try. Definitely keep it in the arsenal. Just a new, new way to look at bluegill fishing. It's something a little bit different. It's exciting and it's fun. He's coming. He's coming. He's got it. <laughs> Oh, that was cool. Kind of dialed in the Mega Live a little bit more to where I could see right in front of the boat. And that's a good one. <laughs> Gosh, look how thick he is. Just a meat pie, man. <laughs> Big and tall. That is an old bull bluegill, man. That was super cool. I got the Mega Live kind of dialed in so we can look at right in front of the boat here. These fish are about Gosh, like 15 feet in front of the boat, the start of the colony is, and got it to where we can see them. And that one, I watched them, I could see them. I could see a couple chasing the drop shot, chasing it, chasing it, and finally he bit it like right below the boat. Super cool. Big old bluegills on the drop shot, using super cool technology, Mega Live and 360. That's fun, can't beat it.